What's up guys, Houndash here, and today we're jumping in with a bunch of Destiny 2, Shadowkeep, and Season of Undying news. And of course, today it is this week at Bungie, and so they jump in and talk just a little bit about Festival of the Lost, some of the new content that's going to be launching next week, including the dungeon, the Xenophage quest, and they give us details about the new game mode, Momentum Control. So we're going to round all of that up, as well as changes to Triumphs as we move into future seasons, updates to accessibility in the game, and they give us a few patch note previews for the update that we'll get next week. And so we'll round up everything from this week at Bungie and a few other things in the video. If you guys enjoy this one, a rating is very much appreciated. But now let's get into it. Guys, very briefly before we get into the new stuff, I'm going to be on the Destiny Community Podcast today. And of course, that's only a couple of hours from now when this video goes live. So if you're around at 6 p.m. Pacific, you can tune in. But if not, you can catch it later on YouTube. So I'll link all the details for that down below. And of course, it's really exciting to jump back in with these guys. Ash did some absolutely amazing artwork for this one. So as always, I really appreciate that and the invite. And it'd be awesome if you guys can come and show them some love. Now, to talk about this week at Bungie, they say, mark your calendars, Guardians, because October 29th is a day filled with updates that will appeal to just about every player in this community. We have a full menu of activities to tackle, challenges to master, and exotic loot to add to the collection, so... Firstly, of course, Festival of the Lost is kicking off once again next week. We got a preview of that yesterday, and so if you want to check the video out, I'll link it down below. But they say a new dungeon is also opening up to willing fire teams or brave guardians who want to tackle it alone. Speak with Eris, she knows the way. And so initially we'll have to go and talk to Eris. Maybe there's kind of going to be a quest to kick it off. But Bungie right there are teasing to a possible reward very similar to Shattered Throne if you can solo that dungeon. And so that's going to be really cool to check out. And as we know via data mines and things like that, we will be seeing a few dungeon weapons. So that's definitely really cool. Separate to this, though, they do list the launch of the exotic quest for Xenophage. So they say you may have seen pictures of a replica we had of the bug gun from past events, but it's time for you to go out and claim the Xenophage as your own. And they give us a nice juicy image of that new exotic right there. And they say, where will your path take you first? There will be many options for you to consider, depending on how you like to play the most. And so that kind of suggests that Xenophage is going to be a separate thing to the dungeon itself. Or at least that's how I read it, of course, because last year we got things like the Wish Ender. It was kind of an intrinsic part of the dungeon, but this year the dungeon does have a loot table of its own that also consists of weapons. So yeah, I'm willing to bet that they are kind of two separate things. Although maybe the Xenophage quest could also have a step that requires the dungeon. We'll have to wait and find out and let us know down below whether you'll go for the exotic machine gun or the dungeon first. Who knows, that exotic might be kind of useful in the dungeon. I think I know what I'm going to do. Next though, Bungie say that the Crucible is about to gain some momentum, which changes the way that Guardians meet in glorious combat. So next week, Lord Shax is mixing things up in the Crucible with a new mode called Momentum Control. While Mayhem puts the focus on supers, Momentum shifts your focus to gunplay. This is a fast-paced, hair-on-fire experience where the lethality of all weapons has been cranked to 11. You're incentivized to be aggressive as you defeat other Guardians to earn charged melees, grenades, and supers. Here's a quick rundown of what to expect. So there will be instant respawn timers, so no actual wait when you go down. Weapon damage has been increased, so higher combat lethality, and everything in your arsenal is a contender. Ability regen requires effort, so defeat enemies to charge your melee, grenade, and super abilities. On top of this, there will be no tracker, so a little bit like the year one competitive that we had. Zones will capture faster and grant more bonus points per kill. And then supers will be supercharged, so increased damage resistance in super means you become the 1000 pound gorilla. But be careful, because heavy weapons will put you down quickly. And on top of this, they have increased the amount of heavy ammo that spawns in, both the respawn rates and the drop amounts. And so that's a really interesting mix of things going on. We don't know exactly how much the weapon damage increase is going to be, and there are a lot of different kind of number values potentially going off right there. Bungie say that many of them who have playtested this compare it to the classic Halo custom game SWAT, but of course for Destiny, and they've done a lot of trying out of different weapons and seeing how they behave in this heavily modified sandbox. So Momentum will be the featured 6v6 rotating playlist during Festival of the Lust, and they will be monitoring the community's response to see when we want to bring it back. Yeah, let us know what you think about that, no tracker, but increased weapon damage, so of course weapon time to kills will have been decreased potentially fairly drastically. Instant respawn will get us straight into the fight. Zones are going to capture very quickly. Then we're going to see a lot of heavy ammo around and increased damage resistance in super. So yeah, to be honest, I can't really imagine how that's going to play out. It's one of those that we'll just have to kind of experience in the game. Either way, let us know what you think about it. Now though, Bungie talk about triumphs and some stuff that they're going to be doing with the triumph system in general, as well as titles moving forward. So, of course, they spoke about the fact that over the course of Season 8, 
We're going to resolve the situation with the Vex, and the related activity will go away before the start of Season 9. And of course that refers to Vex Offensive, but Bungie say this will also be true of the title associated with Season 8, and both the Triumphs and Badge for the new title will ask players to participate during this season. Once the conflict has been resolved, players will no longer be able to earn the season's title, Undying. They talk about New Light and getting all of the score, so New Light forced us to think about many of the existing Triumphs and how to evolve our philosophies around what Triumph score represents. For example, when a New Light player joins the game, should they receive all of the score for getting to level 50 without having to put in all of the effort? They say that that certainly doesn't feel like much of a Triumph. That said, shouldn't a new Kindergarten have the chance to have that magical moment where they hit max score? And they talk about how the rules for this are having to evolve, so pre-Shadowkeep Triumphs that no longer require effort can't be earned after Season 7. These Triumphs have had their score reduced to zero, and the players who have earned them will still see them in their Triumphs. Seasonal Triumphs will have a score value, and if you miss Triumphs during the season, you may not be able to max out your score for the year. Even with an evolution to our Triumph philosophy, we don't think we're done making tweaks to the system, and not everything is as clean as we'd like it to be in order to support Destiny as an evolving world. So we'll be listening closely for feedback as we consider how to best continue the evolution of Triumphs. So just some interesting insight into that system, and how some of it may change moving forward of course, on top of the changes that we've seen in Season of Undying. In the Bungie update they talk about accessibility, and they are adding some new subtitle settings, and so there are going to be five different sizes of text to pick from, a variety of different text colours, and a few different styles for the background of the text. They give us a little video preview of how this is going to work. The good thing is that this feature will be in the update that we get next week on the 29th, so if that's something that's going to be useful for you, definitely check it out when the update drops on Tuesday, and there are some extra insights in the TWAB which I'll link below. They do give some quick shouts for new players who may want to jump into Festival of the Lost, so brand new players who got through the New Light experience must achieve 770 power before Eva Levante will beckon them with her Festival of the Lost quest. If you're below that power, you won't be able to interact with Eva Levante at all, and there is a 750 power requirement for the actual activity for the event, so just bear those in mind. Bungie also give a shout to the new Movie of the Week emblem, so of course this is something that they do in TWAB every single week, and we can see there is a pretty cool emblem, so if you feel like submitting a movie, it certainly seems like now would be a good time if you want to pick that up. Now though, to round up a couple of additional things, Bungie did post a new trailer for Leviathan's Breath today, so check that out if you want, it's actually pretty neat. And the meme has been that the trailer is only as long as the actual quest. Well I'll tell you this, it's nowhere near as long as the draw time on that thing. What the hell, here's the trailer! Got something for you. To round up some other quick shouts right here, there's been some conversation in the community about the stats on the Solstice of Heroes gear. So the stuff that we were able to claim if we unlocked that gear in the game does roll out with pretty low or standard stats for Armor 2.0. And with a lot of conversation about that in the community, DMG did say that there was no goal to give the armor poor stats, but we did have a conversation that it wouldn't be appropriate to give players extremely high or max stat armor pieces out of the gate. It would reduce motivation for players to earn new pieces or engage with challenging content in search of their desired roles. And the goal was to give middle of the road stats which players could toy with to learn the new armor 2.0 system. However, he is pushing feedback that players would like to see Solstice gear as universal ornaments, and of course that would solve the problem. Also, players would like a means of grinding and acquiring random roles for these sets to earn higher stats or different affinities. And I think universal ornaments could really be the answer to that, because then you can just use them anywhere. But I totally agree, for the grind for those armor pieces, it would be nice to be able to use them on max value kind of endgame gear. Let us know your thoughts about that, Cosmo will also pass some feedback along to make exotic quests account-wide as opposed to being bound to the character. And he said he's not sure if it would be retroactive or just apply to exotic quests going forward, but he is letting the team know that it's a desired change. I guess it definitely would be useful outside of the fact that certain exotic quests maybe can be kind of useful for power leveling and things like that. What do you guys think? Let us know down below. As always though, they are still collecting feedback on the Pinnacle power system and giving it to the team who are looking at improving it for future seasons. So 
Hopefully, more sources for Pinnacle Gear will become available. And so based on the fact that Bungie have mentioned this a couple of times, it definitely appears that they're taking this feedback on board. So guys, let us know your thoughts about everything that we've covered in the video. I'll be keeping you posted with the content drop next week, so stay tuned for that here on the channel. If you guys have enjoyed the video, a rating really helps me out. Once again, the link for the Destiny Community Podcast stuff will be down below if you want to check that out. But for now, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.